So let's talk about overclocking and Ibis model buffers. Now remember that your voltage time data inside of an Ibis output model is essentially what is used by a signal integrity simulator to determine when to switch the data of an output Ibis model. Because remember you have four VT waveforms. Uh, you've got two for your pull up and two for your pull down and each one essentially tells when to turn these transistors on and off. You know, so from going from a low to high state and a high to low state. And inside your voltage time data, you know, you'll see example of a signal transitioning from a low up to a high. And it's important that these signals transition up to steady state or else, you know, the signal integrity simulator won't be able to recreate the I.O. buffer properly when it uses its own internal algorithm when it processes IBIS model data. Now what happens in overclocking is when you try and switch your IBIS model at a faster frequency than that voltage time data window allows. So essentially, let's say you have a 100 megahertz signal that you're trying to switch. So the period is 10 nanoseconds and the pulse width is 5 nanoseconds. So what this means is that the voltage time data inside of your IBIS model has to be 5 nanoseconds or less. And the reason why this is, if you think about it, is if you need to transition your data, um, say from 0 to 5 nanoseconds, and you try and switch it faster than that, then the simulator is going to come in here and say at 2 nanoseconds before your data has reached steady state and try and switch it on you, okay? And that's going to cause you lots of problems in your output signal. You know, the most uh, common issue you'll see is that, you know, if you're switching a lot of bits, it'll start missing some of the bits that it's switching. So it won't be able to recreate the input pattern that you're giving it. And this phenomenon, again, it's called overclocking because you're essentially trying to run your IBIS model faster than that voltage time data waveform allows you to do. Now this used to be a much bigger issue with IBIS models <clears throat> before a lot of the signal integrity simulators started trying to address it. So a lot of the different SI tools now have the capability to help you handle this. They have different um, flags or settings you can use that allow you to say cut out initial lead time or what they'll call dead time on the end. And the whole way to think about that is, is you might have a, a VT waveform that takes you know, 5 nanoseconds to go from, say, a low up to a high. But it's not switching during that whole time. Maybe the first 2 nanoseconds it's flat because it hasn't switched yet. So what the simulator we're trying to do is, is cut out that time, sometimes called uh, leading time or initial delay. So it can cut that time out and move your whole VT waveform inside that switching window that you want. And so that's really what overclocking is. And like I said, it used to be a much bigger problem with the SI tools, and now it's becoming um, not so much of an issue. But it's still something that you really need to be concerned about, because if your IBIS model is overclocked, then you're really relying on the signal integrity simulator to fix it for you. And they sort of do this behind the scenes and on the fly for you when you run your simulations. So you can't really see how they're modifying or editing the data for you. So it's actually always better to make sure that you don't have an overclocked IBIS model in the first place to avoid this issue. Thanks for joining me today for this Coffee Break video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you have any questions or feedback, or if you have a topic that you'd like me to discuss next time, send me an email at tim at signalbytestech.com. And be sure to join us online at signalbytestech.com. Sign up for our newsletter. Be notified when we do another one of these videos. Now, I'm going to have another cup of coffee, and it's probably time for you to get back to work. I'll see you next time.